Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here at Talk at Google, and we're here at Google LA. Uh, my name is Lisa Bloom, and I'm very privileged uh, to have the opportunity to interview Jean Bauer. Uh, I'll tell you about Jean in a second. I'm a civil rights attorney here in Los Angeles. I do race and sex discrimination cases, police excessive force cases. I'm also an author and uh, legal analyst for NBC News, and I appear frequently on CNN and other networks talking about the big legal issues of the day. But for today, I'm here in my role as a vegan and an animal activist. I am personally a very passionate uh, vegan and animal rights person. I've been vegetarian since 1977, vegan since 2009, and uh, I'm here to say that it's a very easy, wonderful life uh, not participating in animal cruelty. I thought it would be difficult, but in fact, it's very easy. But enough about me. I'm here to interview Gene Bauer. Gene is the president and co-founder of Farm Sanctuary, and he's going to tell us more about that. And he's also the author of this wonderful new book, Living the Farm Sanctuary Life, The Ultimate Guide to Eating Mindfully, Living Longer, and Feeling Better Every Day. And who doesn't want to have all of those things? So I'm going to interview Gene for a bit, and then we're going to have questions and answers. I always love live events because I feel like it's a great opportunity for everybody to participate and ask questions. We're actually here live in the flesh. This is not TV. And so please ask us questions and please interact um, at the end. And don't be shy. I'm sure Gene is willing to answer any questions that you have. So Gene, can you tell us a little bit uh, about Farm Sanctuary and how it got started? Yeah, Farm Sanctuary is an organization that works to protect farm animals from cruelty, uh, to challenge the factory farming system, to change how our society views and treats these animals, and to promote more mindful, compassionate living. Uh, most people are humane, most people are against cruelty, but most people are unwittingly supporting a cruel system through their food choices. And this is something we grow up with. I grew up eating animals without really thinking about it. So at Farm Sanctuary, we just want people to think about the way we're living and ultimately to make choices that are aligned with our own values uh, that we can feel good about. Instead of what often happens when the topic of factory farming or animal slaughter comes up, people say, don't tell me, I don't want to know, because it's upsetting. Uh, and be the, the fact that it is upsetting speaks to how it is not aligned with our humanity and our compassion. And you know, we also grew up believing we need animal foods for health. We need meat for protein, for example, but we don't. So, so a big part of what we do is dispel these myths and these beliefs. And so Farm Sanctuary is a place where the animals are our friends, not our food. Uh, we started by visiting factory farms and documenting conditions, finding living animals thrown in trash cans or in piles of dead animals. Mm. It started as a, a, an investigation and an expose of factory farming. And Partly to heal ourselves, as well as to help individual animals, we started rescuing animals. Because seeing horrible thing after horrible thing is difficult. Yeah. And it does something to you. It does something to people that work in these industries. You know, I feel bad for people that work at slaughterhouses. I just saw something this morning on, online about uh, a, a case in Ohio where some the, where an egg factory is being, and people involved with it are being charged with slave labor. So people that work in these places are also not treated well. So I, it, it, to me, being vegan really is an aspiration to live as kindly as possible. And not eating animal foods and choosing to eat plants instead is, is a pretty easy way to do that. And if somebody can't do it overnight, they can do it incrementally. And that's a big part of what the book's about. So I want to, and, and there's a great part in the book about small steps you can take because I think for a lot of people, the idea of going vegan entirely seems really extreme and difficult and scary, even though I'm here to say it's not. But I want to talk about those small steps in a minute. But what is a farm sanctuary for people who aren't familiar with it? Yeah, it's a sanctuary where the animals get to live out their lives. And we have three farms, one in Watkins Glen, New York, one in Northern California, and one in Acton. And so if they're sick, we take them to the veterinarian. You know, whereas on factory farms and in production, if an animal is sick, they're oftentimes just left to die or sent to slaughter. Because financially, if an animal's worth $10 or if it's a chicken, they're worth even less. It's not worth it economically to spend $50 on a veterinarian. Right. So um, the animals are our friends at Farm Sanctuary, and it's a place where people get a chance to interact with them, to come up and give a pig a belly rub. We have pigs who totally love, like 800-pound like pigs, you walk up to them, you touch their belly, they flop over for a belly rub. Uh, we do other events at the farm where we encourage people just to think differently about these animals. For Thanksgiving every year, we do a celebration for the turkeys, where the turkeys are our guests, not the main course. <laughs> so we turn the tables and, of course, have vegan food. 
Um, I always say, if we can pardon one turkey, as the president does every year, and the weirdest political event of the year, every year, right? That weird turkey pardon. If we can pardon one, why can't we pardon them all? Isn't and I've problem? been to your Farm Sanctuary Thanksgiving event, and it's a wonderful event, and I encourage everybody to check that out. But, but it's really true, though, how we have this big public pardoning. It's so bizarre. And at the same time, we have millions of dead bird bodies on plates around the country. Right. So there's this irony and this disconnect and this conflict, in a sense, between sort of our humanity and our compassion and our desire to live well without causing harm. And you know, one of the things that uh, we say is, if we can live well without causing unnecessary harm, why wouldn't we? And I want to encourage everybody to look at the books that are on the seats, on your seats and the seats around you, because there's just these beautiful photographs in the book, right at the beginning and throughout the book. You know, as Jean says, a lot of times animal rights things can bombard you with these horrible videos that are just very painful and difficult to watch. This is the opposite. These are beautiful images. These are positive images. And uh, frankly, it's kind of refreshing uh, for as somebody who works in the animal rights movement yeah. to see the, the positive stuff and to come at this more the carrot than the stick. Yeah, you know, seeing those ugly images is very painful. And sometimes people do turn off to them because they don't want to see it. I think it's important to know about that and be aware of it. So I think those images are very helpful in terms of advancing awareness about these issues. But they can be very depressing, too. And we need to know that there is a solution. There is something we can do to prevent this abuse and this horror from continuing. And, and the, the good news is that every day, each of us makes choices that can make a difference. There's many things in this world that are outside of our control. And we feel helpless. But when it comes to what we eat every day, we have a lot of power over that. And so being vegan, for many people, myself included, is a very empowering kind of statement. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something you can do. It's very affirmative. And, you know, Farm Sanctuary in this book particularly is really about taking steps and, and building momentum towards living more mindfully, more compassionately, more healthfully. And, you know, as a vegan, I, I started doing this in, I went vegan in 1985. And at the time, I was primarily concerned about animal cruelty, and I didn't want to support that. But I wasn't as health oriented. So I was eating, you know, noodles and margarine and not the healthiest things. Right. And as a vegan, you can eat, you know, Oreos and Coke. And that's not the healthiest thing. <laughs> right. In recent years, I've become more, I think, holistic in this and trying to eat more whole foods, more plant, you know, all plant foods, but more uh, fresh plant foods like fruits, vegetables, less processed foods. So I think that's an important part of this as well, not only to leave animal foods off the plate, but to eat whole plant foods. And it's been estimated we could save 70% on health care costs by eating a whole foods plant-based diet in this country. That is massive. If you think of the costs associated with uh, health care, and, and in addition to the pain and suffering people experience, if we could alleviate that, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So what we're talking about is not only aligned with our values, it's aligned with our interests. It doesn't make sense, it's irrational to eat food that makes us sick. But we do that in this country. And we die younger than we need to. We suffer from heart problems and cancers that could be prevented or the risks certainly could be lessened by eating plant foods instead. So this is about living in a way that is healthy for us. And then the environment. It's been estimated, or the United Nations has put out a report talking about how animal agriculture is the top contributor to the most serious environmental problems we're facing, including climate change. United Nations talks about how animal agriculture contributes more to climate change than the entire transportation industry. So this is another thing where by making food choices that are mindful, we can take a bite out of all these problems. So it, it, the more you look at it, the more sense it makes. Well, so obviously you're obese and disease-ridden and protein-deprived and uh, probably have a very short lifespan ahead of you. Uh, let's, how old are you, if I may ask? I am 52, going to be 53 in a couple weeks. Okay, so I'm 53. And one of the things that we always notice when we go to vegan restaurants is how everybody's you know, in pretty good shape and pretty healthy, and it's kind of a joke among vegans. And another joke among vegans, vegans is the question that we always get, which is, where do you get your protein? And I, I don't mean that in a derisive way because it's a legitimate question. We've all been so brainwashed to think uh, that we have to eat animals or animal products, otherwise we'll just wither away from lack of protein. Uh, so can you address that issue for those Absolutely. who might be wondering? Absolutely. Well, we actually eat way too much protein in this country, you know, and that creates problems as well. Excessive protein in our bodies creates an acidic condition. 
And when you have that, it has to be neutralized. And oftentimes it's neutralized with calcium, which is leached from our bodies, leached from our bones, and contributes to things like osteoporosis. Uh, in this country, we have a huge problem with osteoporosis, and we also drink a lot of cow's milk. But we've been told that drinking cow's milk prevents osteoporosis, so there's a disconnect there. Yeah. Um, so excess protein is more of a problem than not enough protein. And there's protein in things like potatoes and broccoli, believe it or not. Not a lot of it, but there is some. If you want higher protein content, you can have beans, which have plenty of protein, and also a lot of fiber. Tofu, tempeh, um, whole grains, quinoa are good sources of protein. Greens are a good source of protein. Um, but eating a whole foods plant-based diet and eating a variety of foods is probably the best nutritional advice. And by doing that, you'll get all the protein you need. There's never been a documented case of somebody who has had protein deficiency if they have had enough food. The only time you see protein deficiency is if people are not getting enough food. So if we eat just a whole foods plant-based diet and a variety of things, um, it does us very well. Yeah, we really don't have any problem with protein deficiency in America. What we do have a problem with is fiber deficiency. And so yeah. if you turn on the TV, you'll see all these ads for, you know, yogurts and pills that you need to take because you have digestive problems. And, you know, I always want to scream back to the TV, just eat vegetables. It's so right? true. I mean, if there's one nutrient that we need to say more Americans need to eat, it's fiber. I mean, that if you because that is linked to whole plant foods. Yeah. So that really is one of the most important messages. So eating greens, eating big salads with like beans on it and uh, nuts or you know, whatever you want to add, um, croutons or you know, there's all kinds of things. You can, you can make some amazing salads with a large bed of greens. And arugula is actually a performance enhancer for athletes. You know, what I found basically there is you just eat the same foods, you just have to eat a lot more if you're training and burning a lot of calories. But these greens, and especially arugula, can actually enhance performance. Um, there, you know, I mentioned Scott Jerk before, who's an elite athlete. He's written about this. Um, there's also a guy, Patrick Babouillon, who broke the world record carrying the most weight of any person, and he's a vegan. So he also may have some ideas about elite performance. For me, I would just ate a lot more food, and like things like arugula, I found to be a performance enhancer. But I'm also more of a distance person as opposed to perhaps explosive. And so there are, I'm sure, plant foods that could be used. I don't know enough about them, though, to give you really solid advice. Um, but I would do it slowly. And, um, and you know, dates, for example, are pretty dense. You probably need to go to dense foods. Uh, nuts, you could probably make something with like a dried fruit and Smoothies. nut. Smoothies are really great, you know. Um, and, but, but dense foods probably would, and, and you could put, you know, nut butters in smoothies to get additional kick if you needed yeah, it. Yeah, I do a lot of, I've also run marathons and I do a lot of long distance cycling and I, I, I get what you're saying, that you're, you're hungry and you're a big guy, right? Um, I, I love smoothies. In fact, I had one this morning with peanut butter or with almond butter or with bananas. It's also great if you're busy and you're on the go. You can take it in the car. Um, there's, a, there's a lot you can do. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for turning out again. Thank you, Talk at Google and Google LA. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much, Gene Bauer. Thank you, Lisa.